Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So glad to be with you once again. I'm thanking God so much for just allowing us, you know, just to meet up today. Whatever time you're viewing this, I pray that you're at a good place. I pray that you can, let's just say, see the good that's lying ahead in your future. You know, God is a good God. And when I say he's a good God, I'm talking about he's He's, he's, he's good and good. He's greater than great. I'm talking about the God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think according to the power that would be in you. And that power is faith to believe that your God can do anything but fail. Are you hearing me today? Oh, praise God. I believe I have a very good word for you today. And, you know, it, it's so very important that we get into, in, get into the habit of making today count. You need to make your today count. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And, and you do that when you can make yourself happy. When you can get to that place where you can see that happiness is a choice. I'm going to say it again. Happiness is a choice. I'm talking about your happiness now. And, and God wants you to be happy. Hey, hey, we know we're living in a fallen world. And living in this fallen world, we're going to deal with issues, trials, and tests, circumstances, and situations that are going to try us, that's going to try to steal our joy, that's going to just try to take us places where we, you know, really don't want to go. But I'm here to tell you today, <laughs> you're going to have to be able to press through the, the, the heartache, press through the pain, press through the, the loss, press through fear, press through doubt, let go of double-mindedness and know that all things are truly working together for the good. Why? Because if you are in Christ, you are being kept by him. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, you know, There's a little song, he's got the whole world in his hands. And I'm so glad to know I'm in his hands. You should be glad you're in his hands. And you do that by accepting Christ Jesus and making him your Lord and making him your Savior. I should say making him your Savior and making him your Lord. God is a good God. You know, today I want to talk to you about happiness. Happiness. And happiness is a choice. You have to realize that happiness is a choice. It's a decision that you have to make, that you have to make. You have to choose to be happy. You have to choose to be happy. Now, hey, and you can't, let's just say, rely or depend upon other people making you happy. Your paycheck shouldn't be the thing that's going to make you happy. I mean, we need the money to to buy food, put gas in the car, food on the table, so on and so forth, you know, to keep that telephone on and keep the lights on and, you know, to pay that rent mortgage, so on and so forth, the car note, this and that and that and this. And every now and then we want to take a little vacation. So, you know, it's the love of money, which is the root of all evil. But, but understand, these aren't the things that should make you happy. See, see, happiness is a gift from God. Happiness is a gift from God. And true happiness is closely related to God and can be seen and measured by your relationship with him. Your relationship with God. And that relationship you have, that relationship that you have with God is going to come about through your relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, he's the door. He's the one that leads to life. The Bible says no one can come to the Father but by way of Jesus. No one can come to the Father God but by way of Jesus. You have to have a relationship with Jesus. Happiness is a choice. Man. See, you have to choose to be happy every day. Now, well, I realize, and we all recognize and realize, Things are playing out in our lives. Situations and circumstances are playing out in our lives that are designed to steal our joy, our peace, our happiness. And well, just to know, just to remind you, you are living in a fallen world. And living in this fallen world, all of us are going to be tried. All of us are going to be tested. 
but you have to be focused and committed to living your life in a way that would be pleasing to God. Man, ooh, Enoch, mm, he pleased God. Noah, mm, I'm not talking about perfect men now. Abraham, you know, was a friend of God, wasn't a perfect man. Moses wasn't a perfect man. Peter, James, and John wasn't perfect men. You know, uh, uh, Sarah, uh, phew, oh, Jesus. You know, Hannah, I mean, hey, Rahab wasn't perfect people. I mean, had some real issues, just like all of us. We have real issues that we're dealing with and contending with today. But I'm here to tell you today, happiness is a choice. Happiness is a choice. And, 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 and look at this, John 10, 10, my opening verse of scripture. This is it. This, this is my theme. It is. And this is what Jesus is saying to you today. The thief comes, but to steal, kill, and to destroy. But Jesus says, he comes so that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. That you might have life. Why do John put in here, or why is Jesus saying that you might have life? Because you have to choose to be happy. You have to choose to want to live your best life now. You. You have the power and the ability to make a choice. You're not a Robbie robot. You're, you're, you're not, you know, you're not, you know, you're not supposed to be programmed by the world. The world wants to program you and to get you, let's just say, in that in that uh, space or place where you're marching to the world's beat, oh, so to speak. Are you hearing me? And this is why, you know, we have to be so closely tied to Jesus, so closely tied to this world, understanding that it's so very important that, you know, we're doing what we need to do to stay in line or in agreement, I should say, with God and in agreement with that word of God. And let me add, I think it's vitally important that you are led by the Spirit. You want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Let me make it plain. By the Holy Spirit. See, see, and, and some of you, you know, hey, are in recovery mode right now because you've been dealing with some issues. You've been dealing with some people, some situations, some relationships that may have, you know, <laughs> fallen apart. Two were one, and yeah, you know, you're going in different directions and. You know, and you find yourself right now in recovery mode. And be and at this place of recovery mode, you're not happy. You're sad. You're broke. You're busted, disgusted. And you don't know what to do with yourself. You might feel like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. But I'm here to tell you today, don't give up. Don't give in. Happiness is a choice. In other words, choose to be happy choose to be happy see we know the devil comes to steal to kill and to destroy and when i and when we say that now we're talking about everything that is good in your life he want to take away everything that is good in your life he wants to steal your joy he wants to steal your peace he wants to steal your happiness and anything else he can get his hands on in other words, your finances, we're talking about, you know, your children, if you're in a marriage and you you have a, 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 a lovely home, children, so on and so Hey, he wants your children. Phew. Matter of fact, he wants your children more than he might want you because he realized, man, chronologically, your children have more time here. And the sooner he can get them off track, the sooner he can get them in darkness, the sooner he can get them to think or believe that they're not good enough and nobody loves them, that he going after your children too. That's right. He going after you. He going after everybody and anything that is good in your life, he wants it. He wanted to take, he wants to take it away. That's his choice. His choice is to take away what is good. God's choice, ooh, 
was to bless you, to bless you. And you have to be able to choose you this day who you will serve, who you will listen to. You listen to the voice of the enemy, you're going to choose destruction. You're going to choose failure. You're going to choose heartache. You're going to choose pain. Hey, see, there's no, there's no, uh, you know, in love, there's no torment in love. God so love you. See, but the enemy wants to torment you. He want to break you down. He want to get you to a place where you want to give up or give in. I'm here to tell you, don't give up and don't give in. See, to understand, when you understand that the devil wants you to live a less than life, but God wants you to live a more than life. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than the devil that is after you. See, and, see, see, and, and, and beneath what, see, the devil wants you to live far less and far less than what God has planned and intended for you to live. He wants you to, ooh, man, he wants you in the sub-basement. He, he, God trying to get you in the penthouse and the devil trying to get you to the sub-basement. But I'm here to tell you today, it's, 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 it's you making a choice and a decision. It's just like stepping on an elevator. Stepping on an elevator, and then you step on that elevator, and then you push the button to the floor you want to go up. Now, you can push the button to go up to the penthouse or to the, you know, the 12th floor, 13th floor, or whatever floor, or you can push a button going to the basement. Now, if you push a button going up, you're, going, you're doing good. You push the button going down, you don't want to meet that guy going down into the basement because that guy, he is not your friend. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Choose you this day. I want to go up. Let me push that button going up. Phew. It's amazing now when you look at heaven and you look at hell, both words start with an H. You know, so it's like getting on the elevator and you have an H, you know, H going to heaven and the H going to hell. Well, I'm going to push that H going up. You got arrows going two ways. You got H and H on each button, but you got arrows pointing in, in different directions. One going up, one going down. Which way do you want to go? And, and understand now, God wants you to live and experience his love, his joy, his peace, and his happiness now. Now, see, because the devil's not playing with you. Understand now, the devil is not playing with you. He's out to destroy you. The devil is out to destroy you. He wants everything that you love, everything that you hold near and dear to your heart. Are you hearing me? All that good stuff. That's right. As I said, he wants your children. He wants your home. He wants your car. Yeah, he wants your job. He wants your peace. He wants to get into your heart. Bible, the Bible says, out of the heart comes the issues of life. So he wants those things that you hold near and dear in your heart. He wants those dreams, those desires, those things you're believing God for. He wants to put a, mm, a damper. He wants to put a dark cloud over it. He don't want you to be able to see it. But I'm here to tell you today, this is your day to be blessed. Why? Because you're going to make a choice and a decision to be happy. You see, that's 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 a oh man, just making that kind of choice and decision is able to to turn the light on in your life. If you're sitting in darkness right now, I would dare say choose to be happy. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to sit in this darkness no more. Mm -mm. No more today. I, I'm, I'm going to turn the light on. Uh, you go into a room, in that room, you open the door of the room. You know, you, you open the door of the room, it's dark. What you do? You turn the light on. You turn the light on because I want to see what's in the room. See? But if you don't turn the light on, you miss the blessings. You don't see all of what God has prepared, what all of what God has put in place for you. Man, I'm here to tell you, my sister, I'm here to tell you, my brother, you are too blessed to be stressed. And it's up to you to do what you need to do to make yourself happy. See, don't give that responsibility to someone else. 
other than God. And God says he's already given you <laughs> the keys to the kingdom. So if you have the keys to the kingdom, you have free entry, you have, ooh, you have access to all of what God has made available to you. So now when you place your faith and trust in people, you know, oh, I, I want I want him, I want her to make me happy. I want that job to make me happier. I want my church to make me happier. I want my my, my house to make me, you know, we can put so much trust in and lay so much on other people and on things when really the responsibility is yours. You have the responsibility of making yourself happy. Why? Because this is your life and life is what you make it. Life is what you make it. This is why I don't want to be, ooh, I would dare say, too far from the word of God. I want that word of God to be near and dear. The Bible says to meditate upon, you know, I believe it's Joshua 1 and 8. Meditate upon that word and, and then you can have good success. You have to meditate on that word. Deposit that word in your heart. And then don't just hear the word. You have to be a doer of the word. You have to apply the word of God. If you want to know the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord is your strength, your peace. Man, God, God wants you to have a good marriage. He wants you to be happily married. And this is why a three-string cord is hard to break. You, your spouse, and Jesus. Uh-uh, my God, my God. No devil in hell can come between the three. And this is why we have to be able to maintain a lifestyle that is conducive to proper growth and development. I'm talking about in the spiritual things of God. Man. Ooh. And understand this now. If the devil can't take any of the above, the good stuff that you have, guess what? His next move is to distort those things that you love. I can't, he says, I can't take it, let me distort it. It's just like going to the to the circus or the carnival or one of those places where you stand in front of one of those mirrors that will distort you. Whereas, you know, a, a regular mirror, you see the reflection of yourself the way you are, the way you appear on the outside. But you can stand before some of those uh, distorted mirrors that will have you all twisted up and looking all funny and looking all strange. And that's what the enemy want to do. He want to distort the promises of God. He doesn't want you to see yourself the way God would have you be. He doesn't want you to see uh, that there's greatness on the inside of you. The Bible says we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency and the power may be of God and not of ourselves. The excellency and power may be of God and not of ourselves. God has put something in you, my God, my God, that the devil is after because he don't want you to be able to play out. He does not want you to be able to live out that quality of life that will support this gospel, that will support what you say you believe, who you say you believe. I believe God. Jesus is the answer for the world today. See, you have to be in control of your thoughts, not just your thoughts, but also your feelings. And sometimes we don't think about what we're thinking about. And because we're not thinking about what we're thinking about, we don't realize it leads to us feeling bad, depressed, lonely, you know, ostracized and just beat up, toe up from the flow up. See, you need to get in recovery mode. You need to turn that situation around. If you're viewing this right now and you feeling kind of bad, you came on to, uh, let's just say, started looking at this program today, you know, and you was and you were going through a trial or a test that's got you down. Well, I'm here to tell you, choose, make a choice, make a decision right now, right now, before we go any further or any deeper in this message, make a decision. I'm going to be happy today. I'm going to be blessed. The Bible says, speak those things that are not as if they are. You have to be able to put yourself in that recovery mode. You got to turn that recovery mode button on. Oh, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. New 
and improved in a special edition. I am somebody because God didn't make no jump when he made you. Are you hearing me? See, the devil wants you to doubt yourself. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can do all things through Christ who's given you his wisdom and given you his love. And he made a promise to you that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Man, you are too blessed to be stressed. You are too blessed to be stressed. It might be time to shake some stuff off. I don't know what you're dealing with, but it's okay to shake it off. Shake it off, let it go, let it drop to the ground. And when it drops to the ground, step on it, smash it. Uh, on that today, devil, I'm going to do a new thing today. I'm coming out. I'm coming out and I'm grabbing hold to that what God has given me, my freedom, my peace, my joy, my love. Lord, it's yours. Yours to have, not just to experience, but yours to live in, to walk in. God wants you to be happy. You have to be able to take control of your thoughts, take control of your feelings. Because sometimes our feelings will lie to us, have us thinking one thing or feeling in a way that, that will cause us to think something other than what it might really be. See, your thoughts and what you're thinking will always lead to how you feel. Your thoughts and thinking will always lead you to how you're going to feel. See, and, and, it's, and, and I would dare say this is very serious. You see, and sometimes we just, you know, you know, as I said, how can I put it? I want to make sure I don't miss. I want to make sure you understand this. See, there's a saying, when you fail a plan, you plan to fail. That's going to take some thought. That's going to take some thought. And you want to make sure you're planning around those things that's going to keep you happy, doing those things that's going to keep you happy. Are you hearing me? See, and that's what this is about. Why? Because it's about growing a life. You know, so many of us are trying to create a life or re when, when, when God has already got a life set up for you, you have to discover your life in God. Discover your life in God. God has given you the keys to the kingdom. He's given you his word. Matter of fact, he's given his angels charge over you to keep you, to guide you. He says the Holy Spirit, those of us who are led by the spirit are sons and daughters of God. You want to be led by the spirit. You have to pay very close attention to what is going on in you. I'm going to say it again. You have to pay very close attention to what is going on in you. You know, we spend a lot of time looking outside of ourselves. And we have these yeah, eyes to see. Thank God for Jesus, for the eyes to see. I don't have to trip over everything. I don't have to fall in every hole. You understand what I'm saying. But as much as you might want to address and pay attention to what's going on around you, you really have to pay attention also to what's going on in you. And then you have to get into the habit. Ooh, Lord Jesus. You have to get into the habit, and I should say into the practice of making yourself happy. Making yourself happy. See, and, 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 and joy has to become a lifestyle. Man, I, happiness and joy has to, I'm, I'm pursuing it. I'm pursuing happiness and joy. And I'm going to make it a lifestyle. I, I, I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going, whew, I'm, I'm going to think, what, what do I need to do to make myself happy? What do I need to do to stay in line with God's will and purpose for my life? I have to let go of yesterday's sorrows, yesterday's cares and worries. I'm not here to keep recycling the garbage. I'm not here to keep recycling the hurt, the pain, the shame. Let me focus on what is going to make me happy. Let me focus on what is going to bring about God's will and purpose for my life. Let me do those things. Man, you know, it's, it's such a good feeling when you can do those things that can not just make you happy, but when you can make other people happy. Man, that's why it's so very important that we can recover. There's some things we've gone through, man, it, 
you know, it, it, it's one thing to go through a problem trial and a test one day, but but sometimes we can make some choices and decisions that will, you know, that recovery mode can last for a while, man. And more than a 30 day detox. It's more than just, you know, uh, going to a, a program for, 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 for 60 days, uh, or, or, or year. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I understand this is a lifelong journey. This is a lifelong journey. And on this journey, there's going to be a lot of twists and turns on this highway called life. But you're not here just to window shop. Mm. You're here to, 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 to meet this man named Jesus and to come into right relationship with with him so that you can find that that strength that peace that wisdom and to know the love that compasses all understanding he want to shower you with his love thank you jesus see 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 and you have to practice like i said making yourself happy you have to practice pursuing a joyful lifestyle and uh, you know uh, a lifestyle that is filled with joy with peace And, and really what you have to do is refuse to accept anything less. Refuse to accept anything that's going to diminish or distort the happiness you're seeking and pursuing and believing God for. Uh -uh. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to reject that. I'm, I'm going to, matter of fact, not just reject it. I'm going to delete it. Delete, delete, delete. So you're going to have to delete whatever the enemy is trying to put in place to keep you from getting to that place where God wants you to be. You are amazing, my sister. You are amazing, my brother. And the devil does not want you to know mm, how great you are as a man, woman of God, as an instrument, as a tool, as someone who was in his hands. Ooh, Lord Jesus, the best is yet to come. Look at James chapter five. James chapter five, verse eight. Be patient. Establish your hearts. For the coming of the Lord draws near. Every day you wake up, you're coming another day closer to meeting your Savior. But you have to be patient now as you travel down this highway called life. And you have to be able to establish your heart in doing those things that will bring about the greater good. Happiness is a choice. Look what that ninth verse says, though. I think this is so very important. Don't hold a grudge against another. Don't hold a grudge against another. Whew. Least you be condemned. Behold, the judge stands at the door. See, Jesus is a righteous judge. You want Jesus to be the one that stands in the gap for you. Are you hearing me? See, take my brother, take my brother and the prophets who have spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction in of patience. Oh, these men and women in the Bible went through. Jesus says that in order to reign with him, you have to be willing to suffer like him. Are you hearing me? So don't think that as you pass through this life that you're not going to, just because you came to Jesus, you're not going to deal with something that's going to try you, something that's going to, you know, cause you to be upset and heavy laden and worried. And hey, this is all a part of life. But when you can have faith in God, when you can put your trust in Jesus, you come to know and to realize all, all things are working together for the good. You're going to suffer affliction, but you're going to have to be patient. And behold, we count them happy who endure. That's it. James, brother of Jesus, says we count them happy who endure. My brother, my sister, I don't know what you're going through, but whatever it is you're going through, if you can just keep on pressing for the blessing. If you can just hold to his hands, 
I'm talking about God's unchanging hands. God will see you through. He will bring you through. And that's your test. That's your test. And if you can whew, stand up to the test, if you can believe God and take him at his word, he'll show you that all things are working together for the good. Mm, 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 for those of us who love him. See, look what it says here. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy, very pitiful. What does that mean? The Lord is very pitiful. In other words, what we're saying is he, the Lord is extremely compassionate, extremely compassionate. He's full of pity and very kind, very kind, very kind, more than kind. My God, merciful. Ooh. But, but look at that 12 verse. 5.12, James 5.12. But above all things, my brothers and sisters, swear not, neither by heaven, neither by the earth, neither by any other oath, but let your yea be yea and your nay be nay, lest you fall into condemnation. Man. In other words, you know, do what you say you're going to do. Don't just talk the talk. You have to walk the walk. See, and that's really what this is about now. See, because so many times we have said things in the past that have really set us up to be failures. And the Bible says now, you can do all things through Christ, not in and of yourself. Because when you are weak, he's able to make you strong. I want to give you some keys to being happy before we close. Some keys that can position you, set you up, and keep you in that happy mode. In other words, some 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 genes, uh, whatever you want to call it. These are some keys that's going to keep you happy, happy in Jesus. That first thing is be patient. Be patient. Matter of fact, James one and three says, knowing this that the trying of your faith works patience. The trying of your faith works patience. And your faith is going to be tried now. See, and you have to be able to be patient. And, and when I say patient, see yourself as a patient patient. You know, someone who is sick is a patient. Well, you have to see yourself as a patient patient. And I know sometimes we go to the hospital as a, you know, trying to be admitted or whatever, the, the, the need that brought us to the hospital. And man, what was taking them so long to call me? We're not patient. Think on those things that are good. Think on those things that would be of a good report. But let patience have her perfect work so that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Entire meaning complete. God wants you to be complete. Do you want to be made whole? Well, stay in Christ. Keep pursuing those things that will, let's just say, keep you happy, keep you blessed. Be patient. That second thing is you need to establish your heart. Establish your heart in the things of God. I know we're living in, you know, a, 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 a sin sick world, but we have to, you have to be able to establish your heart in the things of God not holding a grudge. That third thing is don't hold the grudge. Let it go. As we said earlier, let go of these grudges and these things that will cause you to be, you know, tied to a post, not moving because that's what it is. You're not going to be able to move forward into the blessing. If you hold on to, you know, hate, anger, unforgiveness, all this other stuff, the grudges, things like that. Let it go. That fourth point or key, to being happy is this, be a good example. Be a good example, especially when you're going through, you have to be able to lift up a godly standard, a godly standard when you're under the weight and pressure of a trial or a test. Man, and all of us are gonna find ourselves dealing with some stuff, but, but I'm here to let you know, I'm here to remind you today, you can do it. You can, you will, 
and you must. I'm going to say it again. You can, you will, and you must. Be a good example. That fifth thing is this. Have faith in God. Mark 11 and 22. Have faith in God. And in spite of what you might be going through, believe God for a good and favorable outcome. Might not look like it right now, but if you can just hold, if you can just keep on pressing, you're going to see your change. You're going to step into your change. And let me say this. That sixth point is this. Because when we go through, there's time when we just want to complain. See, but endure. And that sixth point is this. Endure your trials and tests without complaining. Deal with those problems, cares, and worries without complaining. Mm. And I know sometimes that can be hard to do. Because operating in the flesh, we want to tell somebody. Well, I'm here to tell you, instead of going to the phone, go to the throne. Have a little talk with Jesus. Have a little talk with Jesus. Number seven. Number seven is this. Don't make a promise that you can't keep. Remember, Peter? Oh, Jesus, I'm willing to die for you. I'll go to prison for you. And that situation came. Jesus told him, that cock going to crow three times and you're going to forsake me. When that cock crow three times, you're going to forsake me. And, 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 and when Peter said it, that he was willing to die and go to jail for him, he meant it. It's not like he was just talking just to talk. He meant it, but he didn't know what was in his future. He didn't know what was in his heart. Uh, be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sow, that shall you also reap. See, and, and sometimes we don't even know what we sow into. Sow into the flesh. Talking all that godly talk, but sow into the flesh. Because the heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who could know it? Who could know it? So don't make a promise that you can't keep. And then that that eighth that eighth uh, uh, key is this: learn to stand on the power of your testimony. The Bible says in Revelation, "We overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb." Learn to stand on the power of your testimony. You have a powerful testimony. When you look back over your life at where the Lord has brought you from some of the stuff you had to go through to get to where you are today, man, a lesser man, a lesser woman wouldn't have made it, wouldn't have accomplished, wouldn't have been able to achieve what you've achieved. Uh-uh, are you hearing me? But because you was able to stand and keep on standing, because you was able to fight and keep on fighting, you have a testimony, man. Unlike anyone else's testimony, there's not another person on the planet with a testimony like yours. The many storms and the many challenges, the many things that you had to go through to get to where you are today, oh Lord Jesus, you know it had to be God. It wasn't you. You can't take credit for this. Uh-uh. You can't take the credit or get the glory for this. Because if it had not been for the Lord on your side, thank you, Jesus. Look at, look at Psalms 146. Psalm 146 and 5 says this. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord, his God, who made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever. Today, my brother, my sister, today, do something for yourself that will make you happy. That's it. Today, whew, Lord Jesus. See, you can't go back and change yesterday. And you haven't yet stepped into your future. But today, you can make a choice. You can make a decision today. I'm going to do something that's going to make me happy. Oh, I'm on. I'm in recovery me recovery mode now. Oh, I turned on the recovery mode button 
and I'm moving and grooving with Jesus. Uh, and I'm going to go all the way. I got to get to the finish line. Oh, my God, my God. The Lord has passed you the baton, and now it's time for you to run mm, and not get weary. Walk and not faint. Are you hearing me? Oh, man, take up the wings of an eagle. Lord Jesus, you can reign. You can rule. God has given you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you, stop you. You are too blessed to be stressed. And let me say this. You owe it to yourself to make yourself happy. As I said earlier, now you're looking for him and her. You're looking for this and that to make you happy. It starts with you making yourself happy. It starts with you choosing today. I'm going to live in God's peace. I'm going to be happy today. I can, I will, and I must do what I need to do to be happy. That's what you should be saying to yourself today. I'm going to do what I need to do to make myself happy today. Now, I realize you know, everybody around me or with me might not want to be happy. That's their choice. That's their decision. But your choice and your decision today is to be happy. Make today count. Make today count. Are you hearing me? And, 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 and let me say this. Let me say this because I was, I was uh, 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 also... Uh, looking at something that really blessed me real good. And, I, you know, this William, William, matter of fact, let me, let me close out in prayer. And then I want to, I want to, I want to share something with you that really blessed me. And you can, you can play it for yourself. Uh, Perel Williams, the happy song, but let me pray for you right now. Dear God, dear father, we just want to thank you for this day. I thank you for the leading of your spirit. I thank you for the grace of God that is on our lives. I pray, Father God, that you would forgive us of our sin. Wash us in the blood, Lord God. And Father God, I pray, Father, that you would remove all doubt, all fear, all worry, and that you will help, Lord God, my sister, my brother. My brother, the family, Lord God, the, 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 the gifts, the talents, the skills, the abilities that you have placed in the life of each one especially my brother, my sister, who is viewing this program right now that might have some doubts, some fears, and some worries about what lies ahead in their future. I pray that you bless them real good. I pray that you will open a door of greater understanding. And I pray that you would forgive mm, them of the doubt and the double-mindedness. Help them to know, Lord, that the best is yet to come. And Lord God, as we lean not into our own understanding, help us, Lord, to know and to acknowledge that happiness is a choice and a decision that must be made by each and every one of us. So we thank you, Father God, for your goodness. We thank you for your love. All this we now ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Oh, praise the Lord. If you like this video, this message on happiness is a choice, please share this video with someone. Share this message with someone and, and, and give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. And also, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. And hey, <laughs> I, I, what, you, you, you want to be, let's just say, in a, in, a, in a place or in a position where you can continue to get that, that word that can motivate, inspire, and to support you moving forward and growing spiritually and closer to God and, hey, becoming the man and the woman that God wants you to be. I love you now. But I want to share this song with you, this song with you by Perel Williams, uh, the happy song. Praise God, praise God. I don't own the rights to this song. Pharrell Williams. 
The happy song. Offense to you, we should Today, today, I'm going to make myself happy. Bring me down, King Money. Bring me down, the lovers to the show. Bring me down, King Money. Bring me down, I say no. Bring me down, King Money. Bring me down, the lovers to the show. Bring me down, King Money. Come on, brother man, make yourself happy. Sister girl, make yourself happy. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Have yourself a wonderful day. Happiness is a choice. <laughs>